Hi, welcome to another one of our Dr. Foot videos. It's first thing in the morning, I have 30 minutes before my first patient, and I thought, let me make a quick video, let me have my morning coffee, and let me describe the patient I saw yesterday evening, which I found really interesting. Now, I saw a patient yesterday evening about 5.40. She had come to me from quite far away, she caught the train into Birmingham, and she wanted some orthotics for a condition called cuboid syndrome. I'm gonna talk about this in detail in a minute. However, she said something to me which resonated with me and made me think a little bit. She said, as long as I have a name to my condition, I feel better because I know I can manage this and I can treat it. Made me think, is it important that we give a condition a name or is it important that we treat the patient's symptoms? Or is it important that we, we can make sure that the patient can do a certain activity that they want to do or they have to do without any discomfort? So is it important that they can walk, walk to work, run, uh, hike, wake up first thing in the morning without any discomfort? Can they get their quality of life back without any discomfort in their lower limb? Or is it important that they have a name? Now, sometimes a name can carry a lot of weight with it. Sometimes it will play on patients, on patients' minds, and I've been guilty of this in the past. So I've sometimes said, I've sometimes read out an MRI finding in front of a patient, and I've explained something, but it was an incidental finding. That means it wasn't causing the discomfort that the patient was having, but they have now got a name of something else that could be potentially wrong with them and that's going to play on their mind. Sometimes the name of a condition for health professionals is really important. It tells us about the location of the of the problem, it tells us about the severity of the problem, it tells us the potential symptoms the patient may be getting, it tells us about the prognosis, it tells us how long we expect the patient to uh, take to get better. It tells us a whole lot of other things as well. What if that name that the patient, what's, what if the name of the condition the patient has got is complete BS? What if it doesn't mean anything really? Like I've said before, I don't like the term metatarsalgia. It just means pain in the ball of the foot. I don't like the term shin splints. It just means pain in the lower leg when, you, when you're doing an exercise. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell you how to treat the condition. Let me add another name to this list of conditions I don't like, and that is cuboid syndrome. Now the cuboid is a bone. It's this bone here, it sits on the outside of the foot. Sometimes the patients complain of pain, so they'll say it hurts right at the top of the foot, right there. You can get problems within this, the joint, the articulation of the joint, the tendon, the other structures around this joint, by if you get a if you keep getting ankle sprains or if you're not putting the right amount of weight through this big toe or this first metatarsal and you're and you're offloading on the meta, on the on the other metatarsals and the other um, the other bones around the ankle and and the, and these and these joints here that can affect the articulation of it however cuboid syndrome doesn't tell me anything is it a problem with the bone itself is it a fracture is it a problem with the tendons or the sheets, or is it a problem with other structures around there? Um, doesn't tell me anything. Now, podiatrists, we treat this with mobilization, so we mobilize this joint. So there's a school of thought that says this can sublux or move out of place. I don't think that's possible, um, but mobilization can help. Uh, I don't think the joint, I don't think this can, this can move out of place, but I think it can, I think, the, I think the orientation of it can be altered by mobilization that can affect symptoms. This patient who came to me yesterday evening, she's been having mobilization every couple of months for the last two years. Two years. It makes her better for a month and then it comes back. So something's not working um, and it's not a long-term solution. I think the problem lies within a couple of tendons. There is a tendon, I'm just trying to sort out my tendon here, there's a tendon called the peroneus longus that goes around the outside of the ankle 
and literally hooks around I'm going to show you there hooks around the cuboid and it's like a pulley I think if you if you've either got a functional problem where you're not putting the correct amount of weight through your bones equally uh, how they're um, designed to be put through or if you've damaged it with an ankle sprain I think this must this tendon can get weak but there are other tendons as well there's a tendon that goes on top of it peroneus tertius there's one that goes on the side of it peroneus brevis so you need to st strengthen all of these tendons this patient that came to me yesterday I she was adamant she wanted an orthotic with a pad to lift up the cuboid and I'm not a big fan of them I mean I've, I can make it for her and I told her look we can do it we can do this for you but let's try something else let's try and make these tendons stronger let's work on other structures around the ankle and the talus which is this bone here which I think which I think is a, a very important articulation in the, in the ankle and I think a lot of a lot of the problems that we get around this area if we if we address this we can we can also address these issues here and also work on balance and proper reception and if you can't stand on one foot for too long we need to address that so there's a lot of things we can address mobilization is effective orthotics can be effective i i tend not to inject this joint unless the patient is a runner and um, they want to get back on the track and even then i won't probably choose a steroid injection i'll probably choose prolotherapy um but i'm not a big it's not something i like to inject um, I, I, I have I have reservations about if it can make a difference to symptoms. It has in some cases and it hasn't in some other cases. Um, I think strengthening the perineals and associated structures for cuboid type problems, which is why I don't like cuboid syndrome. It doesn't tell me what it is. So I've sent patients away for x-rays and I've found a, cu I've found a uh, stress fracture in the cuboid. It's like... Until you don't know, until you don't do further investigations, you're, you're just not going to know. But what I found about the patient, what I found interesting about the patient was how she was so adamant that now she has a diagnosis, she wants a particular type of treatment. And the importance of the words and the importance of the diagnosis that she had, she had a name of a condition, so she really put her hat on the name of this condition she felt better anyway uh i need to get ready for my first patient and finish off my coffee hope you found this video helpful it was longer than the five minutes that i thought i was going to spend on it because i could spend another half an hour talking about cuboid syndrome i will definitely bore you then um i shall speak to you soon uh, take care bye